Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exos Heroes episode. So today we are updating our ranking for the Blue Fate cores. But before that, if you would have updated Exos Heroes content, please hit the subscribe button down below. All right, so we are here to start off the ranking at eighth. So we have here two Paki. Um, unfortunately, this guy hasn't gone up the standings. He's still at number eight and more or less because of his nation because again north one frosty is among the top five the fifth that is why he's still here um they haven't really gotten their traction back in terms of pvp and let's take a look at his uh, his kit so in terms of tupaki he doesn't you can't really use him that much apart from his uh what they call this his heart strike and his passive is actually pretty much impressive we'll go to his s1 it's usually a basic 150 damage to one enemy skill uh one mana although it's a one mana it afflicts target to freeze for three turns which is i think kind of good but three turns is just a short amount of time in a battle then for his s2 <coughs> we have here axe bombing four mana which is 750 damage to one enemy not even a burst skill unfortunately he hasn't really been valuable in terms of all the blue fate cores that is why this little guy is at number eight okay so we have here on our seventh which is a new entry to the blue fate cores which is actually garf unfortunately for garf again brun is kind of incomplete yet without fc dorka which most of you are actually clamoring for including me so in our disappointment she hasn't arrived yet including in the summer teaser she she isn't there so again that is why brun the buffs to brun that she gives is not really you know it doesn't really play a big part right now but again when you get garf for the moment it's not even for for her new passive so flag of providence not it's not even for that but more or less for the aesthetic and the new skin that she has so again um garf blue fc garf is actually at seventh because um the nation hasn't ha doesn't have their leader yet in their fate core and more or less if you take a look at um at uh, brun heroes it's only the three of them that can be buffed. So you have Dorka, you have Naomi, and you have uh, Kyla. So those are the only three um, heroes that are worth her buff. So for now, she is at seven. But before that, let's check. Uh, let's check out her skills, her passive. Again, Flag of Providence was the big change from her Gold Fate Core, and also. Um, her S1 is um, deals 375 damage. It's more or less the same as her Fated form, but th uh, there's an, an additional damage on own defense if a niche potential is out. And also here for additional damage for niche potential and also a 420% damage to all back row enemies. So again, not even not even a big change very small change a small you know a small consideration in terms of buff to brun heroes which again i think she will see a rise uh once they have released more brun he heroes particularly for fc dorka okay at number six or sixth it's actually uh blue fate core yao so yao actually pretty much occupied um, the seventh spot, or sorry, it's not the seventh spot, but the spot after Tupaki. She actually had a bump up because, again, uh, Astoria's heroes are more viable right now. Like, you, for example, you have um, you have FC Jinai, FC Jin was was recently buffed, FC Adams was actually had a great buff. You have FC Shell, and the other one would be. I forgot again who's, who's the other one. But more or less, those are the historic heroes that you can really bring. And in terms of buff, they can be used as sec a secondary team in your 
um in your tag pvp but let's go and take a look at her skills so she has actually summer's blessing which grants her frost damage immunity and um more or less she has flop flop as well it's a buff that turns your enemies into uh fish or into rubber duckies so let's take a look at her s1 increase attack of all allies by 31 percent of own attack for eight turns which actually she can be used for historic republic in their lineup and also she has here um refreshing blooming red lotus again it's a four mana spell and deals damage 40 percent damage to one enemy and resets resets turn if the target dies so again she is at number six because of her semi kind of important buff to historic republic okay for our fifth we have here eden eden let's let's go to his kit first so again not really the one of the best kits um apart from um he has superstar so increased damage over time on target hero with attention by 100 percent and anti-fan mark for fan club so his s1 and his s2 are basically very basic so 525 piercing damage to one enemy then you have here her for his s2 is a 51 percent damage to all enemies but it has poison dealing 31 percent damage every turn for two turns again he's not really used that much in uh, in pvp probably some are using him in your pve but what actually makes him shine is actually his buffs to, for greenland because greenland right now in terms of nation ranking they're kind of second uh behind the nombe uh and they have one of the craziest heroes in terms of grouping you have fc battery fc rera you have their fc talia and the last would be fc tantalo in which was actually exiled by schmidt so more or less again greenland has become very viable because of fc eden or blue fc eden so let's go to the next for our fourth we have here blue fc rera um again she has given chaos type heroes a you know a lot to celebrate about because of her buff so she has combat power increase and attack power increase so again let's before we go to the to the heroes that she buffs let's move to her you know to her passive skills first so she has focus fire and dimension leap as well but for her s1 it's actually uh she has bite more or less the same as her fated kit so poison and um i think th this is a damage over time for 82 percent damage and deals 50 percent additional damage for each mana the target has when you are tranquil so obviously with battery and for her s2 it's going to be moonlight arrow deals to 49 percent piercing damage to all enemies and this actually hits like a truck deals 50 percent additional damage for each mana the target has when you are tranquil as well but again let's move on to let's move on first to the the heroes that she buffs as chaos heroes okay as you can see here here are the most important chaos heroes that are actually top in our game you have here fc rare of course you have fc janai um and you have dorka so dorka just requires her her uh, gold fc not her black fc and also you have your fc gene which is actually very good as well for wasted red and you have a new rework kit for fc Jin which is actually going to benefit from the chaos buff we also have here valentina and we also have here uh blue fc baraka as well so again a very good buff coming from blue fate correra okay so third on our list is blue fc rachel so blue fc rachel for his kit not that bad compared to to the one to to the gold fate core rachel let's go through his kit so counter three blow mana and disheartened the usual for even for his blue for his gold fate core 
S1 is going to be Dance of the Red Roses, who deals 100% damage. A little bit lower damage, but again, it has more to the skill in terms of effects. So, afflict silence for 5 turns. After 5 turns, afflicts the target with Dance of the Red Roses and inflicts damage equal to 100% of all current health, which is actually good. And deals 525 damage to one enemy. This is a burst skill. Increases attack hit of all allies by 50% and attack speed by 20 for 10 turns if the target dies. Again, very impressive kit, uh, similar to his uh, Gold Fate Core. But again, his buffs are with Lenombi heroes, of course. So he can actually buff um, himself. He can buff uh, FC Zeon. He can buff who else? Um, I think you have there, uh, what do you call this? Morris. Uh, more or less, those are the heroes for Lenombe that he can buff. FC April as well. And more or less, if you can see, um, most, most of the teams that don't bring Schmidt bring all Lenombe heroes. So that is why those five will really benefit from his buff. Number two on our list is actually FC Sabrina. So FC Sabrina, one of my favorites, she can actually increase your increase your attack, combat power, and attack and sorry, and buffs to attack type heroes. So attack increase uh, default is at 1% increases when you do a fusion. Same also, I forgot to mention, um, same also with FC a uh, blue FC Rera. So again, let's take a look at her kit first before we take a look at a bunch of heroes that she can buff. So in terms of her passive, she has counter 3, she has superstar, and she is good with the dragon as well. So with dragon knight blessing, she is actually, uh, in terms of her uh, S1, deals 300% damage to one enemy, not that bad. But her S2 is very, very good. It's a 4 mana skill, deals 127% damage to all enemies, afflicts target with burn, dealing 55% damage every turn for 3 turns, and also this skill is a burst spell. Okay, let's take a look at the attack type heroes that she can buff. Okay, so for the attack type heroes that she can buff, there are a lot. Most of them are usually are your core heroes like FC Rudley, you have FC Schmidt. Um, you have Adams here, you have Bathory here, you have Rachel here, you have Zeon here, and the list goes on. You have Brooke here, you have Maggie, you have Annie, and that is why she is actually very, very useful. You have FC Morris here as well. Again, her buff is really, um, it really gives a lot of benefits to a lot of attack type players, uh, attack type heroes. So more or less, she is going to be at our number two as of the moment. And for number one on our list, it is still Blue FC Baraka. Because number one, his kit is actually fantastic. You can actually use him um, to replace uh, Black Fate Core Baraka if you don't have Black Fate Core in your Nombe teams. But if you take a look at his passive, of course, he has your first dragon skills. The Great One, Dragon Blood, Wrath, and Dragon Scale. So again, that is why he is still top in terms of kit. Um, a, lot of, a lot of players are still using him in, in, in teams, um, Lenombe or otherwise in other teams. So if you can take a look at his S1 which is deals 225 damage to one enemy, resets on turn when the target dies, and again steals one mana and grants two mana back if uh, the, uh, that ally is disheartened. And also, if you take a look at his S2 Heavenly Thunder, it's a 525 damage to one enemy. Again, it steals and it grants mana back to a uh, back row of uh, uh, allies if the target is disheartened. So again, even if without, um, without Rachel, Blue FC Baraka is actually very good, even uh, as a blue fate core. When you take a look at his buffs, he actually buffs Wasted Red. So again, Wasted Red being one of the top three nations actually is really bene benefiting from this. So you have recip uh, recipients such as Garf, you have Rudley, you have Annie, you have Maggie, 
you have uh, Jean and a lot more wasted heroes which are usually being used either in PvP or in PvE. So there goes our rankings for the Blue Fate course updated and more or less guys for those of you who have stuck uh, this far in this video please consider subscribing hit that bell icon so, don't, so that you don't miss any exos heroes videos also guys if you have any comments on this video please put them down in the comment section below i would love to hear your comments and suggestions if you have guys take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out here